Hi class, now let us start with our chapter 4 function and you are looking at a PowerPoint slide that have been made during Malaysia's movement control order April 2020 just to capture that historical moment. At the end of this chapter, you are expected to know the concept of functions or the theory of functions and how to write them. You need to know the concept of input or parameter to functions and the opposite, which is the output or the return value from the function. The chapter content. First, we will look at function structure, then how to call a function. The term call here means how to go to the function and execute the instruction which is contained in the function. And then we will go through a little bit about .NET methods or in this case methods mean functions because you may need to do this in your GUI project. Let us look at how the structure of C, C++ functions look like. In most of programming language, we have something that we call a black box where we can give input, then we should expect some output from it. In C, C++, this is what we call function. It is a kind of black box or a set of statement or instruction that is bundled together and be considered as one. We call the function. If the function needs inputs or parameter, we just give the input and then we retrieve the output if there is any output. And we don't have to bother what statement or instruction are executed in the body of the function. So that's the beauty of it. You can just give input then take output and don't care about what is going on inside the function. In C, C++ we call function. In other programming language, they may call it procedure, methods or many other names. This function or black box will be referred to or called many times in the code. So the reason why we bundle a few instructions together to become a function is because we don't want to rewrite the same sequence of instruction or statements when we want to execute that same sequence again and again. We just refer to them as a name, which is a function. Functions will have what we call parameters. Sometimes we also call these parameters as arguments. And these parameters or arguments is what we call input into the function. And they most likely will also have written value that will be given to us or the user of the function as output. We give some input, then we expect some output. You can compare. You can compare this like sine function in trigonometry. The input to sine function is the angle, for example, 30 degree. And the output is the sine value of the input 30 degree, which is 0 0.5. And as a matter of fact, programming is actually applied mathematics and you can actually visualize the concept of function in programming just like the concept of function in mathematics. However, not all function gives output value. And as a matter of fact, not all function will receive input also. Some function just don't have input, don't have output. In C++, if the function does not have written value, it is called void function. Not to tell that the function is empty, but just that 
there's nothing should be expected from the function. So we won't mistakenly assign this void output into a variable. This is the minimum or the skeleton of C, C++ functions. That is the syntax of it. We will have a line of what we call function header. We give the function a name, the function name. And just like when we declare a variable, we precede the function name with written type. Just like we precede a variable name with the data type of the variable. Then to make the function stand up or to differentiate between a function name and a variable name, all function name will always be followed by a pair of bracket. If the function receives input or has parameter, then we list the parameters in the correct sequence in the order of how it is declared. But if there is no input, then this bracket is empty. So this is the function header. Then the body of the function is surrounded by a pair of opening and closing curly bracket. And then inside the body is what we do to reflect the function of that function. And if the function returns something, we need a return keyword to tell what value to be written out as the return value in this function. So everything, the function body and the return value has to be key in in between the opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket. Nothing in between the header of the function and the body. If you see some example in the internet, has something in between that is the OC style. We are not going to use it anymore. But perhaps Visual Studio still accept it. So let us explain again the parts of the function definition just now. The return type declares the data type of the output. The output in this case is the return value. The value that's written by the function. If the function is not returning anything, the return type has to be void. If the return type is integer, then it is int integer. If the return type is double, then it's double. But if there is no return type, it is void. Function name is the name of the function. It follows the same rules as the variable name. Function body is a block of code that performs what the function is supposed to do. This is what we call the black box whose internal operation, we don't care. The function body is surrounded by a pair of opening and closing curly bracket, like we said just now. Parameters declaration is the list of the variable with data type of it that is considered the input to the function, if they exist, which means if the function receives an input, we need to list the input as parameters declaration. This is conceptually the input part of the function. Return value is a value that the function returns to the caller. So if we can recall just now the example of sine function, if the input is 30 degree, then the return value is 0.5. Return value must be the same type of return type. Otherwise, you will get a syntax error. And it has to be preceded by return keyword. More on return keyword. Return keyword will terminate the execution of a function. And the execution returns back to the caller of the function where the execution transfer from somewhere else to this function, it goes back to the same point. It gives out the return value if the function is not void, which means if the function returns something, the return keyword will give that value to the caller. 
will bring it to the column. If the function is returning void, return keyword is optional. Unless we want to force the function to terminate somewhere in the middle. And this return keyword may appear anywhere in the function body. It's not necessarily at the end of the function. Because like we said just now, we may want to force the function to terminate anywhere in the middle. So that is why it may appear anywhere in the function body. But of course, it has to follow the logic that is supposed to be done by the function. If the function is void and there is no return keyword, the function will still return at the end of its body. When the function finish, when the execution reach the closing curly bracket, then definitely it's a return time. Let us wrap up the concept of the input output of functions in an animation so that we can visualize what is going on when the function is called and the value is getting in and coming out. So we have a function. Then the function may have parameter as input. This will be the header, what the user of the function see. Then there will be a black box, the body of the function, that the user of the function do not care, don't have to know, or don't have to know what is going on inside. So the user of the function will give the input value to the parameter. Then this parameter will be passed into the black box and then something is happened. The function will be doing something to the value and then that value the final one will be will be written back to the user as written value this is the output value that reached the user so this is how we visualize what is going on in a function i hope you can try to try your best to visualize the data flow of this way. In C, C++, there is one function that we call main function and at this point you may have seen main function many many times because every time you start a program in Visual Studio or, or in any compiler, you will see integer main and bracket. That is what we call main function. In C, C++, the only mandatory function is the main function, where the function's activity starts. So if you want to trace the flow of the execution in a C, C++ program, you first should locate where the main function is. The parameters to main function are the parameters that the user give at command prompt. This you will learn later about command line parameter. We will learn about this when we start learning about array.